assalamu alaikum i hope so you are all fine and doing great so today's our topic is basically on the slavery gland diagnostic modalities in the previous lecture we discussed basically uh, about the anatomy and uh, reproductive functions of slavery glands so today we will discussing basically mainly on about the diagnostic modalities how to uh, do the diagnosis of slavery gland disease or uh, slavery gland basically so there are different tests basically for diagnostic modalities uh, we proceed basically with the history by taking the history uh, from the patient and then doing the clinical examination and then uh, we move on towards some investigation so the the one in the more commonest use diagnostic modality includes the plain film radiography in which uh, we ask the patient to have a uh, dental x-ray in which we can see either the slavery sloan is uh, present in a duct or not so basically these can be either uh, uh, it can be detected with the help of a mandibular occlusal radiograph or an opg ortho pentomogram so uh, we can do we can take basically history we can do the clinical examination then we can move towards the plain film radiography uh, which is basically used to identify the slavery sloans either they are present or not and they can be uh, identified by the help of either mandibular occlusal radiograph or opg ortho pentomogram now this is basically the picture of mandibular occlusal uh, radiograph you can see that uh, here uh, near the you can say like if this is second molar and first molar is basically missing so you can see this is say here uh, basically the slavery stone is present here in the sublingual region or you can say in the floor of the oral cavity floor of the mandible here you can see in the opg orthopendomogram as well that, that this uh, slavery stone is basically present and near the inferior alveolar nerve uh, and in the ramus uh, basically at the angle near the angle of the border of the mandible here so then there is another technique so by which we can also we can be also use as a diagnostic modality for slavery gland and this technique is known as basically the cellography and cellography is basically the gold standard uh, for the slavery gland diseases or slavery gland uh, investigation procedure it is also known as contrast imaging okay why because contrast medium injected into the ductal system of slavery gland followed by the serial radiography so basically what happens in this techniques you uh, in, inject a contrast medium into a ductal system of slavery gland so contrast medium is basically injected into the ductal system and the duct of slavery gland which is basically followed by the serial radiography so you place the contrast medium in a duct of a slavery gland and then uh, you do radiography now it what does it contains uh, the contrast medium basically consist of uh, water soluble or oil soluble contrast media uh, it is being used and it, it contains either 20 to 25 to 40% iodine okay so uh, the contrast media can either be water soluble or oil soluble and uh, it contains 25 to 40% of the iodine in it now we have a uh, uh, contrast material which is 0.5 to 1 ml contrast material now moving for forward basically we introduce it with the help of a syringe or metal cannula like in the in this picture you can see that uh, it is basically inserted with the help of a uh, metal syringe or a cannula like if the, the you have place a cannula here and then you have are passing it to it contrast medium is basically injected into this uh, uh, parotid gland duct so if this is a duct here uh, you can see that this is a duct here of the um, parotid gland like this so basically the slavery uh, the contrast contrast medium is basically inserted into this and to uh, to this duct uh, it travels into the parotid gland and then you do the radiography so, so do remember that cellography is a gold standard for uh, detecting the slavery gland uh, uh, problems and it can be asked in the your exam as mcq or ivy also so this is a better clinical picture you can uh, discriminate it very easily that uh, if uh, this is like a maxillary uh, first molar and in uh, opposite to it like uh, on the buccal mucosa you can see this uh, the, the uh, parotid gland is present uh, duct parotid gland duct uh, sten stenson duct is being present here so you can prepare it easily and uh, you can insert basically inject uh, the contrast medium uh, from here 
into the duct of the uh, in the stenson duct of the parotid gland and then you can uh, follow it by the radiography so if the contrast medium is water soluble it will be more miscible with saliva it is basically easily injected into finer duct it will be less painful uh, readily eliminated ductal drainage and uh, renal clearance so it has uh, all these advantages that it will be more miscible with the saliva it will be easily injected into the finer ducts and it will uh, cause less pain and it is basically readily eliminated and uh, ductal drainage and through the renal clearance okay so if the contrast medium is oil soluble lipid or oil more radio opaque it will be more radio opaque and it, it will have a sharper image produce uh, it will produce basically sharper image it will be more viscous more injection pressure you need to push it and it will uh, uh, require more injection machine and it and you will it will cause more discomfort and uh, it will be basically poorly eliminated as compared to water soluble uh, and uh, it will you can also have hydrogenic duct obstruction as well and foreign body reaction and granular necrosis may also occur so there are some uh, benefits of it and some different advantage as well like uh, advantage includes it will be more radio packed you can see it uh, very much clearly on the radiograph uh, a sharper image will produce basically it will be more viscous but uh, it will require a lot of the injection pressure and will lift comfort for the patient as well and it will not readily eliminate it uh and it can cause hydrogenic duct obstruction or foreign body reaction or granular necrosis as well now talking of uh, the the cellography basically it can be asked in your exam as well basically it has three phases ductal phase snr phase and evacuation phase you should remember this you it this can be asked in your exam basically it has the three phases ductal phase snr phase and evaluation phase Uh, so it should be cl cleared from the gland within the five minutes. So it basically uh, you should clear it uh, from the gland within the five minutes. Uh, uh, the contrast medium or uh, contra contraindication in patient with iodine sensitivity, acute infection, and in, uh, and before a thyroid gland study, because uh, uh, you are giving like inserting iodine which is twenty five to forty percent. So it is basically contraindication in iodine sensitivity patient and acute infection and also before a thyroid gland study. Okay, so do remember this, and you need to move it in within the five minutes. So you have to move in ductal phase and external phase, evacuation phase. So this is basically a picture. Uh, if this was uh, the duct, you have passed the uh, uh, your contrast medium into it. Then it has gone into the external cells uh, here, and then you have clicked the, the radiograph, which tells uh, the basically the, the parotid gland activity, or if this is a submandibular gland. Okay. Like in this case, you can see that this is basically telling the sublingual gland activity here. Sorry, submandibular gland here. Now, if there is a cellulose, if there is a stone present, how will you see it? Basically, you will see if the, uh, if this is a duct and you have passed the contrast medium, you will uh, notice that there will be radiolucency here. So basically, uh, there there will be a, a, a defect here, or you can say a called a calculus or a stony appearance here. And it will be appear in the radiolucent, and it will be known as like filling defect here, and ductal dilation to proximal to the calculus. Basically, duct here will be dilated as compared to the uh, calculus. So, uh, with the help of uh, these cellography, uh, you can also detect cellulosis or cellulary uh, gland stones. So, where are cellulary uh, cellography basically used? What are the application of cellulography? This can come in your exam. As a UG or or your senior or examiner examiner can ask about it. Basically, cellography can be used in the obstructive pathologies. Uh, can be used in inflammatory condition, in autoimmune disorders, in space occupying lesions, like ductal injuries, and identification of ectopic glands. So these are some of the application where they are used. Basically, they are used in obstructive pathologies, dental injuries, identification of ectopic glands. Space occupying lesion, like autoimmune disorder, inflammatory condition, obstructive pathologies. Now, slavery, slavery gland endoscopy. Basically, it is a, a little bit less invasive, or you can say it is a minimal invasive. Uh, it is a diagnostic and therapeutic technique, basically, and it it identifies structures and also the dilated small structures and clear the mucus plus. So basically, uh, it tells you where the uh, constriction is being present, where there is structure. It identifies it. And it helps to dilate the structure, open it up a little bit, and remove the mucus plugs which are being formed. 
so you can see like this is a basically slavery glandoscope so and these are the it's a armamentarium which include grasping wire basket and you can see that like they, they it is inserted in this way here uh, its diameter uh, should be less than 4 mm here in this case you can see so if uh, you can see that this is a stone here you can see a balloon tip catheter is being placed here stenosis in the second branch can be seen here ductal stenosis and close up view of the same side basically these are shallow endo uh, endoscopic pictures you can, you are observing in this picture it, uh, it is, uh, there is stenosis being detected in the uh, second branch of the stenson duct here <laughs> okay then then we uh, with the help of uh, the grasper we remove it the stone this is basically the grasper here you can see that if the this there was a stone being present here with the help of a grasper we remove the this slavery gland stone this is a picture with the help of shallow endoscopy we have see so uh, with the seen this and with the help of the grasper here we have removed the stone okay and then we have uh, other diagnostic modalities as well which include cd scan mri and ultrasound so for the mass lane of slavery gland they are basically used like if the lane is very much enlarged, then we use this uh, CT scan, uh, computer, computer, computer tomography, and magnetic resonance imaging and ultrasound. And ultrasound basically determines, determines the mass is cystic or either uh, solid. Basically, is, it is a tumor or a cyst. So this is basically a CT scan picture you can see here. Then we have also one important technique which we often do in our clinical uh, wards and etc. Uh, it includes slavery gland biopsy. Basically, it is used for diagnosis of cystic syndrome. So, the patient with cystic origin syndrome, we do um, slavery gland biopsy. Lower lip labial biopsy is performed. Basically, the lower lip, uh, lip labial biopsy is being performed, which include 10 and slavery glands are removed after LA administration. Basically, the first we give uh, the local anesthesia, and then the 10 minus slavery glands are being in, uh, removed uh, from the lower lip labial biopsy region and uh, exam examined histologically uh, and assigned focus score basically they are uh, examined histologically and they are uh, assigned some focus score focus presence of the 50 or more lymphocyte plasma cell lymphocytes per uh, milli four millimeter of the slavery and this is basically uh, telling you the focus score is how the focus hole is being assigned it is uh, seen by the presence of 50 or more lymphocyte plasma cell lymphocytes per four millimeter square of the slavery <laughs> If there are, there are one or more foci focus present, then they are basically diagnostic. You can see that basically this is a lower lip labial side biopsy, and 10 minus lively glands are being removed from it here. And then the one or two foci of the uh, are being scored, and if they are uh, seen, then they, this is basically diagnostic. So, this is a picture you in which they have done basically the biopsy. And then we can do say FNAB uh, can be also performed. Basically, FNAB technique is used for slavery masses or tumor in which you see a tumor. Then there is another technique which is also important, which is known as cello chemistry examination of the electrolyte composition of saliva. Basically, we examine basically the electrolyte composition of saliva. And uh, if there is a raised uh, sodium and degrees potassium and inflammatory cell adenitis, you will basically see that uh, in the inflammatory cell adenitis. Uh, the sodium will be increased and uh, there will be degrees in potassium. However, in the case of slavery scintigraphy, uh, we uh, do elevation uh, through the slavery and parenchyma. The liberation of these studies are radiation exposure and poor grand resolution. So, basically, these are the liberation of the slavery scintigraphy. The radiation exposure is given and the poor gland resolution. And uh, we do it through the evolution of slavery and parenchyma. You can see, like in this picture, uh, like uh, a needle is being placed here, and they, in, they can be placed in FNAB, cellophane, as well as the slavery scintigraphy here. So this was all about the today's lecture. I hope so. Uh, this lecture was being useful for you guys, and uh, you all uh, under understood it. Uh, so, inshallah, in the next lecture, we will be discussing about the slavery gland diseases, which include mucosal and other, uh, uh, some necrotizing, salary, nitrous, etc. Uh, so, till then, stay tuned. Uh, inshallah, I'll be you in the next lecture. Khuda Hafiz.